Today we're going to talk about insects. They're super interesting and they are so valuable to this planet. Um, so we're going to first start talking about their bodies. Now let's take a little bit closer look at insects and their body parts because they're pretty much all the same. Um, what we have here is, of course, we have a grasshopper. Now let's narrow in on the grasshopper and take a look at different things on it. Like its head right here, we have an eye and we have its mouth, often called its mandibles or jaws. And then we also have antenna that come from the head, two of them. Um, we also coming from the head is the next is the thorax, which on human beings would be like their chest. And coming from it, it has uh, legs, six legs to be exact, three on each side of its body. And the grasshopper has an extended one that made for jumping. So it's like a spring action, boing, it goes, just flies through the air. Um, and then also on the grasshopper, so we also have the abdomen right here. So we have the head, we have the thorax, and we have the abdomen as part of their body parts. We also have the antenna that I covered as well as the legs, but it also has wings up on top. And the wings help it fly through the air. And there's two sets. There's the large wings on top and underneath a smaller set that help it maneuver through the air. It's very cool. And then um, underneath that, they have something called an exoskeleton, the hard exoskeleton right here that it talks about. And that's like a shell. So human beings, we have bones that hold our body together. In contrast, insects have an exoskeleton that also protects them from predators. All right, let's take a look at five different insects. Um, these are considered some of the most deadly in the world. And let's see if we can see some of the body parts and how they're moved and how they uh, uh, act within this uh, insect. Okay, so let's take a look. The first one that we have has been getting a lot of buzz in the news, no pun intended. Uh, this is the Japanese giant hornet. Now the Japanese giant hornet uh, is generally about an inch to an inch and three quarters long. So maybe about that in relation to my hand. The queen is a little bit bigger at about two inches. That's a pretty big insect. I'm going to make it really big so we can take a really nice big close look at it. Okay, so you'll notice that it has its jaws, right? Its mouth, its eyes, its antenna. You might want to point them out on the screen while I'm talking. And we also have the legs and then a big long body. Um, now what's most interesting about them is not only their size, but also they're very predatory, uh, specifically towards honeybees. And if you like honey, that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing regardless. Um, they can decimate a hive, meaning just kill off a hive of honeybees relatively quickly. For instance, in one minute, one of these Japanese hornets can kill uh, up to 40 honeybees. So if you have a few of these in the hive, you can decimate a whole hive. The other thing is they travel far. So in one day they can travel 60 miles. That's quite a feat. And also they go 25 miles an hour. So they're a powerhouse of an insect. Um, and hopefully they can solve the problem of getting rid of them in the US because they can cause a great deal of damage. Okay, onward to the next one. And the next one up is the tsetse fly. Now this one is very is a lot smaller than what we would see with the Japanese hornet, um, but I'm gonna make it big again so you can see it a little bit more closely. And what do you notice about it? The thing that I notice is it has a belly to it. Now I have a feeling that that might have something to do with how much they reproduce. They pr reproduce four times or have four broods a year and that could be hundreds of little insects uh, that come from that. Um, now the tsetse fly used to cause a lot of trouble. It's not so much anymore because they've had it more under control but they have a parasite in them that causes something called sleepy sickness, sleeping sickness where people fall asleep and then they don't wake up um, and die. Um, it's been known to have caused 3,000 deaths and also um, it's primarily in Africa. So that's the tsetse fly. 
The next one we have up is the Africanized honeybee. Now I love bees, so I'm gonna make this one nice and big because they're fascinating. Uh, isn't it gorgeous? It has all that yellow fuzz and beautiful wings and uh, black and yellow on it. Um, but the Africanized honeybee are easily agitated, meaning that they get angry if they're disturbed, and then they swarm and then they attack, uh, which can be very deadly. They've been known to kill uh, over a thousand humans, uh, have been reported, um, and they're primarily in warm spots, uh, starting in Africa, but then they somehow ended up over in South America and then up through Latin America. And in some parts of the United States, we do have Africanized honeybees. Um, so we do need to be careful with them. Uh, beautiful animal though, or beautiful insect though. They can, um, when they get mad, they'll chase you for a mile. Um, so you want to stay clear of the Africanized honeybee. The next up is the driver ant. Now this is much too big for it, a little of that. I'll bring it back to there in a second, or I'll bring it back up now. But the driver ant, what's interesting about them is that uh, they're very small. So in relation to like the Africanized honeybee, which is almost two inches long, they're only an eighth of an inch long. So think of just the tip of a pen. And their real power is in their jaws, uh, but there's also a lot of them. In a single colony, you can have over 200 million of these ants living. And what they do is they march slowly through the forest and jungles. Of, of tropical places. And um, if you are not, like an animal is wounded and can't move, they what they do is they swarm it and they will eat it uh, very quickly. And, uh, and then that's the end of the, the animal. So, but most humans in their right state can get away from these things just very easily. And in fact, some of the tribes in uh, are known for um, taking, now let's see, that looks like it might be really painful, and it is, um, but the tribes will use it as stitches. So what they'll do is they'll have, if somebody gets a wound and they're bleeding, they'll take the ant and they'll put it over, it'll bite it, and it will use uh, its uh, pinchers as, um, as stitches, and then they take the head off and it stays there on the person and they'll do this multiple times um, so anyway that it looks painful to me it looks awful but it's a good way to actually have sutures and close wounds uh, kind of ingenious too when you look at the natural habitats all right and next up what do you think the most deadly one is hmm. if you thought this one you are right what is that one now, normally they're not this big obviously but this is the mosquito and we've all had them we all get itchy from them they bite us we get itchy um, but in some parts of the world they uh, carry a disease called malaria and malaria um, can make people sick and die and um, th through the great groups at the UN through the World Health Organization through philanthropists like Bill Gates and other organizations they've been really concentrating on how to lessen the deaths by mosquitoes and again, this isn't everywhere in the world. In fact, uh, malaria, for the most part, has uh, come down considerably in its range. Um, but let's just put this in context. Um, between 2017 and 18, the numbers have reduced. So the number of deaths by malaria in 2017 were 416,000. So that's half a million people have died from malaria in 2017 and that number has decreased uh, slightly to 405 in 2018. Um, still a problem uh, killing a lot of people in this world and it is an issue. All right and notice on this one instead of a mandible it has a, a needle on the front of its on the front of its face that sucks blood and so that's slightly different as a variation to the insect that we've seen. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I'm going to get rid of this little guy and the hornet came back on him and took him out. No, I don't think they take out mosquitoes, uh, but honeybees for sure. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and I hope you got something out of it and it was nice talking with you. Have a good day.